In this video, we're going to continue to practice Blender, learning about creased edges versus inserting control edges, and just practice extruding and creating shapes. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're gonna to continue to practice our Blender skills by looking at a few different ways in which we can create and manipulate geometry. So to get started, the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna be working with this default cube. I'm gonna go into my edit mode. I wanna change from my vertex selection, which is default, to a face selection, and I'm actually gonna rotate this around I'm gonna select the bottom, the front, and the two sides, holding down the Shift key. Then I'm gonna go up to my Delete option, which is under Mesh, Delete, and Delete Faces. This is gonna leave me with two faces left of that original cube. Once I have these two faces, what I wanna do is start building out some sort of shape, and I wanna to learn to fill in the gaps, and then we're gonna learn how to control edge weighting. So for this, I'm gonna go back to my edge selection and I'm gonna be using the extrude tool. Now the extrude tool can be used by hitting E on the keyboard, but I'm gonna do this by using this option and I'm gonna manually make my selections. Now remember when we do this, it's gonna to try to pull it out normal. And you can see here what that means is it's pulling it out at an angle. We can use the circle to add additional edges but when we're working on an edge or a vertex instead of a face, it's a little bit harder for us to use this method. So what I prefer doing is using E and then using G on the keyboard to control this. I'm gonna to go to a vertical view and that edge is still selected. So I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard and X and just move it back in the X direction till I'm closer to the Y axis. If we rotate this around, you can see now we're sort of bringing this shape back. What I'm gonna do is hit E on the keyboard and then X to extrude this in the X direction. Then I'm gonna do this again, hit E on the keyboard and this time Y and I'm gonna pull it back in the Y direction. So we're just starting to make some sort of general shape and I'm gonna do the same thing here, E on the keyboard and then X, I'm gonna bring it out in X. And if we wanna make any changes or move anything around, I can hit G, G on the keyboard, and I just slide this back on its own edges. Next, I'm gonna E extrude again, Y on the keyboard. And what I wanna do here is I want to make sure the number of divisions or faces that I have are going to be the same. So we're gonna end up connecting these two together. We could do this by bridging them, but I'm gonna do it by merging vertices. So I'm gonna select my first vertex here, Shift select my second vertex. I'm going to go to my vertex menu and I want to connect these two together. Now remember at the first video or probably the second video we talked about the fact that some options are not going to be located on the individual menus such as vertex edge or face if they can apply to multiple things. So for example mesh is going to have the option for us to merge and then we need to decide what we're merging. In this case, we're gonna be merging vertices at last, which means that it's gonna use our last selected vertex to add the, or to put the final location. So again, we're gonna select this, go to mesh, merge, and at last. And also note that this is M on the keyboard if you wanna use shortcut keys. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and go to our edge selection mode and let's think about ways in which we can fill this area in. So if I hold down Alt and select, you'll notice I get this entire loop here. If we go up to Edge, we have the option to make some adjustments. For example, we can extrude these edges inward and this will allow us to begin to fill out the shape. But there's a much easier way for us. The way that I want to explore this is by going to the Face menu. And inside of here we have Fill grid fill, and then there's another fill option where we can fill with triangles. Let's take a look at fill and see what happens. So you can see this option puts in triangles between vertices. I'm gonna use edit and undo or control Z on the keyboard, face, and let's take a look at grid fill. When we use grid fill, this is a much better solution 
because you can see now we've got four sides over here and we've got four sides over here. So this gave us a better final solution using that grid fill option. And if we hit G on the keyboard, you can see that these are connected together. They're moving around all as one. Let's hit escape on the keyboard. Let's go to our modifiers and let's add a subdivision surface. I'm going to increase this to three just so we can see what we've done. This is just a surface that we've created and we can see that we're smoothing it out. Once we've actually created a surface, the next thing that I want to do is I want to select everything on the screen, keeping in mind that when we do this, it's not going to select everything unless you have the x-ray option turned on, and then you'll be able to select everything looking all the way through the model. Then I want to duplicate this. Now again, we can go to mesh, and we can duplicate this by hitting shift and D on the keyboard or by selecting duplicate. When we do this, it's going to automatically attach it wherever the cursor is. And I want to move this out in the Y direction. So I'm going to hit Y on my keyboard and simply move it over. Now it's important to note these are both in the same object right now. And we can continue to edit them in the same object. But if we want to separate them out into their own, we need to use P on the keyboard. Or we can go to Mesh and separate, and we can do this by selection or loose parts. Either will work in this case, but since we already have one selected, let's use selection. This is now placed in its own object in our collection, and now you can see that we can continue to work on this one, or we can go back into object mode, and then we can pick which one we want to work on. For my purposes, I want to work on this one first, and I want to talk about ways in which we can weight this edge. I'm going to hide my light and my camera just because they're getting in the way. And then I want to select all these edges. So I want to work my way around. And remember that when you're selecting edges, holding down control is going to allow us to pick the shortest path between our cursor. Once I have those selected, we need to go to view and open up the sidebar, which is also N on the keyboard. And then we're going to change the mean crease. And I'm going to change it to 0.75. This is going to be a value somewhere between 0 and 1. 1 is going to be a perfect crease. 0 is going to be completely curvature continuous. And 0.5 is halfway in between. So I'm going to go again up to probably 0.75 and say OK. If we increase the subdivision, you can see the more subdivisions we add, the better quality it appears that we're getting on that edge. For here, or for this example, I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to right click on this and shade smooth. So one thing you'll note is that as we begin to turn this corner, the shadowing looks like it's getting narrower. And if we rotate this around, you can see that it happens on this corner as well. So the crease can work pretty well, but we still should consider having control edges to keep it consistent but it's going to be very geometry dependent. In this case, having additional control edges would certainly help. But let's go over to this other object. Let's go into edit mode, which is also tab on the keyboard. And now we want to insert an edge loop and we want to use the insert edge loop and slide. Under edges, inside of here, we've got this loop cut and slide. And this is going to be pretty handy for us to remember that it's control and R on the keyboard. What I want to do is I want to put a loop in here, and then I'm going to slide it up. So this works pretty well from the side. I'm going to repeat that process again, edge, loop cut and slide. And notice that we don't have a loop around the top. So the loop around the top isn't going to work because we don't have a true loop based on our geometry. So we're going to hit escape to get off of that tool. And what we need to do in this case is we either need to consider the way in which our model is divided up, maybe need to add some more geometry, or we need to manually begin to cut that with the knife tool. So I'm going to go to my vertex selection. I'm going to left click so nothing's selected. And then I want to use the knife tool. When I use the knife tool, I need to pick edges where I want to begin to cut this up. And you'll notice that I don't really want to go all the way to this edge here. I'm going to come in a little bit, and then I'm going to go to the corner. And instead of hitting Enter on the keyboard, I'm going to left click outside the model. I'm going to pick this vertex back up, and I'm going to simply work my way around. Again, just before this, you might want to go to a top view. 
You might have to use your shortcut keys if you're on the knife tool, or we can simply come in and, and just do this from the top and rotate around and snap to that. Again, right click when we're outside of the body over here. We're gonna go from here over and back, and then we can hit enter on the keyboard. Let's get off our knife tool and go back to selections. And let's go ahead and go into object mode just to take a look at the results. So it took a little bit more work, but you can see that that is a very clean edge. We're not getting the same inconsistencies when we go around the corner. And even though I didn't spend a lot of time making sure my knife cuts were perfect, this is gonna be a nice option when we get into creating edge weighting or we get into creasing geometry. Adding the beveled edge is okay. And in some cases it's fine, but in a lot of cases we end up needing to add those control loops anyways. You'll notice that this one is subdivided up to six. If we take this back down to three and we right click and make sure that we shade smooth, you can see that at the same subdivision level, the one where we added those edges or control loops is much nicer than the one where we use that creasing. So again, there are going to be situations where the crease makes more sense. And there are gonna be some situations where adding edges makes more sense. In this case, for this type of geometry, adding in those control edges is going to be the better option if we need to control that edge very consistently. We can take the display levels down. You can see even when we go all the way down to one subdivision, that still looks fairly good. It's not perfect, but it still looks pretty good for having a very low subdivision. So you can see as I increase this, it's getting smoother and smoother. And when we go back to our shaded, that looks pretty good. And again, this one really has to go all the way up to about six, which is a crazy number of subdivisions for an object like this. So right now, I just really want to make sure that we understand the difference between adding in these control loops, these edges that help us control the, the weighting or the crease on the edge, or by going into using the mean crease weight and really working on changing the weighting into and out of that edge. Before we finish this, I do wanna quickly add the um, edge loop and I wanna bring this up and I just wanna show that when we use crease and we use an edge loop to help control it, you can see how tight we can get that corner and how consistent it is. Now we can take the subdivision levels down back to a reasonable level, you can see three, and that's only with a single control on the bottom. We really need to have one on the top as well, but you can see how tight we were able to get that crease by also going back in and adding that additional edge loop to help control the curvature into and out of that corner. So these are a couple main tips or tools that you're gonna need when you begin to start creating models that have these minute details or features that you're gonna to wanna to add. Now, obviously, when we've talked about fusion and using forms, the nuances of trying to get these tight creased geometries using the form tools has always been very difficult, requires a lot of attention to detail, a lot of consistency in the workflow. And the same thing is true for Blender. We can't just go in and automatically assume that we can start doing some of these techniques without actually spending the time and playing around with them. So for this example, I urge you to continue to play around just making random shapes. Just go into edit mode, select some edges, and begin extruding them out. So in this case, we can extrude it in Y, then maybe we wanna rotate it about X, maybe change its direction, and just begin working on these shapes and see how you can control the edge weighting and play with adding these small details just to get a good feel for it before you try to apply it to a real object. This basically looks like I made some sort of melted piece of toast, but um, again, it's just a fun example to come in. We started with the default cube and we just sort of manipulated it. We deleted some faces, we extruded some faces, we filled in an area using the grid fill, and then we worked on adding those edge loops, increasing edges so we could understand the differences between them. Continue to play around with this and play around with that default cube. It's really a good practice exercise before you really get in and try to make something. If you have any questions on what we've covered so far, then please let me know. You can send me an email, support at or obviously comment on this video. 
As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.